breaks his thumb. People, even kicking him out of the masjid when he goes to pray Jummah because he was a musician. He's like, I get it, you don't agree with my lifestyle and whatnot, but can we talk about that later? You don't even want to let me pray. Right? Like, we're worse than shaitan. Right? Shaitan at least lets someone pray. We stop the person from praying. So, we often need to forget. That we need to keep in mind that we shouldn't be judgmental of other people. And the way we understand Islam, and the way we try to be better Muslims, everyone sins differently, everyone struggles differently. So just because we struggle differently, does that make one person better than the other? No, it doesn't. So it's important to keep that in mind. So I am going to finish off with our last section. I think I'm done with all the cities. It's what I wanted to go over. I really think that it's just another big building, and it's shiny. All right, so you enter, this is the Taj Mahal, you go inside. I mean, it's pretty awesome to look at, but when you're at this point, you're going to walk for two hours before you get here. Yeah, no joke. I'm sorry, you're going to walk for one hour before you get inside here. One hour in the heat. So, as you can tell, I was exhausted, right? I was exhausted, sweating, a hundred pounds. You enter it's a beautiful structure, but again, we build buildings and that's it. That's what we do as Muslims. Our legacy was what? Living, leaving behind big buildings. We need to stop doing that. So history, past, present, and future. This was the majority of the presentation that I had prepared for you all today. My point was to talk about history in the past tense. History is done. It's, it's over with. In the present, what our goal is, is to learn from the lessons of the past, apply them in the present so that we can be successful in the future. Because if we don't study history, if we don't study the past, we are bound to make the same mistakes of the community over and over and over and over again if we don't know where we came from, if we don't know who we are, if we don't know what our predecessors did. And then this ties into the discussion of identity. Identity. A lot of American Muslims, especially today, when you're the child of an immigrant, you're studying, you're, you're dealing with these three things. Right? What's my religion? What's my nationality? What's my ethnicity? Right? We often pull in the word culture, but you can just define it in these things. So religion, you have, let's say, Islam, your nationality is American, and then your ethnicity slash your culture, let's say, is Pakistan. Right? Often, this one is, you don't have to really worry about this. You're an American. You hold an American passport. You're born and raised in this country. You're an American. But these two guys, religion and ethnicity, usually get a little confusing. And often what parents end up doing is focusing on my kid needs to marry someone from this place, in this city, from this background, and they have to speak Urdu, and they have to be from here, and they have to do that. All at the expense of this, when our kid doesn't pray five times a day, when your kid has no connection to the Quran, when we ourselves have no connection to the Quran. So what ends up happening is that in juggling these three things, one of these usually ends up falling off. And it's either this one or this one. So my point is that often we should give a priority to religion, but here's the thing. You're not going to be able to really have a sense of your ethnicity of where you came from if you don't take some time out and go visit where you came from. Often we go back to India and Pakistan and Bangladesh and the only thing you complain about are the mosquitoes, the heat, the people, this and that, the things which we miss. But understanding where you came from is also very important. Understanding the culture which your parents left behind to give you a good life is very important to do. It's respectful to them to do that, to understand the language, to understand the manners, and to understand where people come from. You know, you can tell yourself all you want that, hey, I'm an American, I'm a Muslim. Yes, you are, but there is another aspect of you as a young person, which comes from a place which, let's be frank, a lot of us as young people going to public school have an inferiority complex of discussing, hey, I'm Indian, hey, I'm, pa I'm Pakistani. Why? Oh, because they'll make fun of me and call me like Aku. Right? But the times have changed. Right? The times have changed. CEO of Google, where is he from? India. CEO of Pepsi, where is she from? India. Right? All these different CEOs, all these heads. CEO of Microsoft, Indian guy. Right? Right? And when someone makes fun of you for that, they go, oh, you just make my slushies. I'm like, no, man, I actually made the software on your computer and 
the thing that's running your phone. So you should be proud of that. You should take it up and embrace it. You shouldn't have a sense of inferiority. And honestly, we spoke about Orientalism, we spoke about colonization. The only reason we're inferior, or we feel inferior, is because our minds are still colonized. Right? There was a saying when someone said, the, the English have left, but their mindset remains. Andres right? That's what they say, that the English is still here. The British Empire is still ruling. Fair and lucky is still common all over India and Pakistan. Right now, when, when, when some aunties are looking for rishtas for their sons and their daughters, oh, fair skin honachi. <coughs> the skin color of powder. Right? We will still be shakal joker with our own right? Like, the loss. There are often these are things that we, that we talk about. But that's not right. We should be proud of whatever color that we are. We should be proud of all these things. So, in this ruffle, that's how I recommend it. That if you as a parent, you know, want your kids to know where you came from, take them back home and teach them about why X, Y, and Z is important. But again, not at the expense of our dean. Teach your kids dean as well. But, where we come from often, India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, they often teach religion, and not just India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, any Muslim country, religion and culture, religion and ethnicity ends up becoming intertwined. Always teach those things separately. Religion is different, and your ethnicity is different, the culture you come from is different. So moving ahead, where are we going? That was the presentation that I had for you all. So if you have any questions, uh, or you know, comments, or any positive, hopefully, concerns, uh, I would uh, love to hear it from you all. If you guys want to stick around, I'm here. Um, if you guys are dealing with these books, I also wanted to mention it. You can. Uh, this is actually one book I wanted to recommend to all of you. It's called Aurangzeb by um, Audrey Krushka. So she wrote this book right now. He is the professor of Rutgers University. And this book is causing a ruckus in India. Because she actually spoke about Aurangzeb, who was a famous Muslim conqueror, or Muslim emperor, in a very more positive light. It's still historical, but she wrote it in a positive light. Now, because Aurangzeb had actually demolished a lot of temples, it's true, he actually did demolish temples for different reasons. Um, people, in, especially within uh, Hindus, they actually don't see him in a very positive light. So there is a very anti-Mughal, anti-Muslim sentiment present within India. Now, does that mean that Muslim empires like the Mughals, because they're Muslim, that we have to support them? We have to show um, the, you know, uh, affinity to them? No. Just because a Muslim happens to, just because an empire happens to be Muslim, does not mean the empire represents Islam. So she actually ended up speaking about a lot of these uh, issues. Uh, madrasas. So madrasas and the effect they're having on.